So here's our program, and we've already covered list records, add records, delete, find, clear, and let's cover update today. Let's open up our two files, be.py, that's backend, and fe.py, that's frontend. Let's open up frontend first. And here's the top of frontend.py. Let's scooch on down past our command functions section. Here's the label section, variables, list box, button section, and finally the buttons section. Let's scroll down just a tad more, and there it is, the update button. Mr. Button? Yes? Put yourself into the root window, and put this text onto yourself. Now your width is 10 units, and when someone clicks on you, do this command, update under command. He says, OK, I'll do that. One more thing, assign all of this information to Mr. B4, variable B4. Mr. B4, I have one more job for you. What's that? Put yourself into the grid, row 0 and column 4. He says, OK, I'll do it. Now let's go to the function section and find this function that gets executed. Update under command. Every time you click on this button. So here's the function section right here. Here's our function, scrolling down a little bit more. Define update under command. It runs off the screen here, so I'll knock this line down the tad, put it back later. I do this so you can see it. And let's move it up a bit, like so. So here's the scenario. I run the program and I list the records. And I click on Sam Spade. I do that, he goes up here. Sam has changed his name to Samuel. So I make this change and I click on Update. Let's look at the update function and see what happened. Here's our update function. And I say, System, I want you to get all the data from the first name field, please. And that's Samuel. That's the change that I just made. Get its length. If it's not equal to zero, then we have data here. And we can continue. System, get all the data from the salary field, please. And system, get all the data from the department field. Get all the data from the last name field. And get all the data from the first name field. And also get all the data from the TT zeroth offset. TT is a global variable and is accessible from all functions. We met him in lesson 5 of 9, if you need a review. TT contains all the selected data in the list box. TT zero with offset? Oh my god, what's in here? Let's find out. Really? How? I know. See this function here? I'll add in two more print statements to this update function. The first print statement will print out TT's zeroth offset. The second one prints out from, and then the entire tt variable. So you can see what was there to begin with. And all of this will print out when you hit the update button. So let's put this to the test and see it in action. So I click on this record, and I take the first name, Sam, and I change it to Samuel. And I hit the update button. It updates and prints out this in the background, just like I just told it to, the two print statements. Now let's go back to our function, the update command function. This is TT's zero width offset, 50. This, TT, this is the whole record, 50, Samuel, Spade, Marketing, 4999. That's the guy I selected in the list box. The record I selected in the list box is TT. And this guy, 50, is his zeroth offset. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 
zero with offset is 50. So this is the guy we're interested in because that's the primary ID field of the record. With it, I can make changes, I can delete things, I can update. So this is TT, the zeroth offset. And this is the guy over here, TT, the zeroth offset, which I'm handing along with all the other data, updated data, to the update function in the BE file. The current value in it is 50. Let's focus on this last line here once again. I have 50 in TT's zero with offset. I have Samuel in the FN field, Spade in the last name field, Marketing in the department field, and 4999 in the salary field. Grab all that data and hand all of it over to the update function. That's what this is saying. And the update function is in the BE file. He's going there now to give him this data. Let's go there with him. Here we are in the BE.py file. Let's scroll down till we find our function. Aha! Here it is. Towards the end. Update. It goes out of sight here. So... I'll hit the enter key a few times and make it easier for you to see. I'll put it back in a second before I run the program or I'll get errors galore. Now, so when the system gets here, it drops 50 into the memory ID field in the update function. It drops Samuel into the update function's first name field. It drops spade into the update function's last name field. And it drops marketing into the update function's department field. And it drops 4999 into the update function's salary field. Now, I'll put all these values down here for a moment. Get them out of the way. Like so. Now, let's go through the code. Mr. SQL i3, please connect to the emps.database. He says, OK, I'll do it. And assign all of that information to Mr. Khan, the variable Mr. Khan. OK, Mr. Khan, create the cursor. That's his little scratch pad. And he does it. And make Mr. Cur, C U R. This variable, the manager of the scratch pad. This is okay, I'll do that too. Mr. Kerr, would you please execute the following SQL command? Update the imp table. And Mr. Kerr says, how? Well, Mr. Kerr, before we continue, take all of these fields here towards the end of the record, first name, last name, department, salary field, and memory ID field, all that stuff that you defined up here between parentheses, and put them into their corresponding question mark placeholder. Put mid over here in ID field. Oh, you want me to take the data that's in memory ID and put that into this question mark over here? Yes, yes, yes. That's exactly what I want you to do. Put all of that into these placeholders here. And those question marks are really the placeholders where you're supposed to put them. Put all of that into those placeholders. Okay, he says, I'll do it. Now, let's continue. I want you to update the EMPS table that's in the EMPS database. And he says, how? I want you to set the first name field in the database table equal to Samuel. I want you to take the last name field in the database table and set that equal to last name. That's spade. Take the department name in the database table and set that equal to marketing and take the salary field in the database table, set that equal to 4999. You mean for all the records? No, 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 no. Do this only where this condition exists. He says, what condition is that? Where ID field 
in the table itself equals the memory ID of 50. And he goes into the database table and he goes, oh, he means, ah, this guy, Sam Spade, update him with all of this information so that he becomes Samuel Spade. Yeah, 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 that's what I want you to do. Ah, because his ID field in the database table is 50. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. That's how you identify the guy. Okay, he says, it's done. Boom. Now, Mr. Khan, would you please write all of this to the desk? He says, sure. And one more thing, would you please, Mr. Khan, close the connection to the ims.db. I'll do it immediately, he says. Now, the system returns to the line following the point of departure in the fe.py file. Let's go there with him. We're now back here in fe.py. Here is the line following that last function call. It's blank. That means this update under command function is done. We're finished with them now. He goes back to our interface screen. And here it is. Samuel's up here. But wait a second. It's not changed. Why come? Why come not changed? Because I must refresh the list box. It still has the old data in it. Let's hit the list records button now. And it grabs the new data in the database table. Oh, look now. Samuel Spade Marketing 4999. They're the same now. It's been updated. It worked. One more button and we're done. I hope this was useful. Please share and like this video. It is appreciated. And I wish you all the luck in the world. Bye-bye now.